Everywhere I go in Tehran, I'm an object of curiosity for these young people. They're eager to ask questions and to tell me all about their freedom fight. And I am stunned by the symmetry. A generation after the revolution, these students are telling me that they want everything. Real democracy, the right to have fun, and even friendly relations with the United States. For me, the young people's struggle is especially personal because I was their age when the revolution happened. But back in 1979, I was living a carefree life, taking all the personal freedoms for granted when I was a girl growing up in Tehran. This was my house. This used to be the back way we came in, and it's now a chicken coop. This was the backyard. Salam. The revolutionary courts of Iran took custody of our house after my family left the country in 1980. Only recently, we were able to reclaim it. So we have a family in here who um, is caretaking the place so that it doesn't get expropriated, so that people don't think it's empty. You know, it was a very beautiful house, not grand, but beautifully decorated. You can't tell that at all now. Everything now is just a shell, really. Just all's crumbling. After the revolution, our house was used to shelter Iranian families, refugees who were fleeing the Iran-Iraq war. This used to be our living room. This room, for me, is, is kind of significant because it was here 21 years ago that my father was sitting in that corner and I was standing here and all of a sudden he said, you know, life as we used to know it is going to come to an end because the revolution is going to happen and it's just going to be completely different. And it was at this precise moment in this room 21 years ago that I developed the first inklings of political awareness. And this is where my life changed. This was a little outdoor patio where we would have parties at night. My parents would give dinner parties and there would be lights hung and there were a lot of trees that had been cut down for I don't know what reason, but lights were hung in the trees. And it was, it was very beautiful. And uh, this, this was my room. It's uh, clearly now a woodshed. It's sad remembering what it used to be like, sad for me and for my family. Salam alaikum. Um, my cousin Sori. We can take it off when we're behind the walls. Bad. Yeah. Salam. And my father. Hey, hi daddy. Hello, Kishi. Hi daddy. How are you? Mm -hmm. Ducking underneath the laundry. Uh, nice, huh? Nice to see you. We've been touring the house, yeah. taking pictures, and it's showing every... It's not a house? It's not a house. <laughs> what is it? It's a ruin. It's a ruin. It is a ruin. My father is 85 years old. He and my mother live in London now, but he comes back to Iran several times a year. My cousin Sori and the rest of my family live in Tehran. Daddy, do you remember 20 years ago, the summer of 1978, telling me that it was all going to change. Our life was going to change. Do you remember that? We were sitting in the lounge, was in the living room. That? Yes. But I knew that something would happen, yeah. Can you remember what you were feeling then? It was all only about the family, what they will become. Are we going to stay here, going abroad? I was, I was perplexed. What do you think would have happened to me if I stayed here I mean, I went to university abroad. I wanted to be a journalist. What would have happened to me if I stayed, Daddy? I can't see that. We, we, we wouldn't be at the same uh, level as we are now, because you didn't, you didn't have, you wouldn't have the uh, free field of activity. 
due to your gender, I mean, being a woman. As a woman, we are not really equal with men now. And that was not what I wanted at the first of the revolution. She thought Khomeini would bring greater freedom, but instead, the Ayatollah, who had preached equality for women, ordered them to cover themselves from head to foot in the all-enveloping cloak called the chador. You know, at first I was against the hijab, but now I think it's not chador and scarf who limits us. It's our law about women. Which, laws? Laws, yes, which limits You know, we have many, many educated women, very intelligent women, very capable women. But uh, in law, we are not equal with men. And that's the main hijab for us. That's the, the main restriction? Yes, not the scarf. So not. do you think that the young women of today, the people of your daughter's generation, mm. do you think that they are struggling for equal rights? Yes, of course. And do you think it'll and work? And I hope they will win. <laughs> I hope so, because I have two daughters. <laughs>